Nearman Condition, the home of Collected oh, Edition. That cover is so awesome. Absolute format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. Hey, hey, all you mentees, Uncanny Omar here from Nearman Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And join me today for your advanced role at the Daredevil Guardian Devil Gallery Edition hardcover from Marvel Comics. So let's go ahead and get started. And welcome back, everybody. So what we're looking at here is the latest gallery edition. These are the hardcover oversized books from Marvel Comics. This is Daredevil, Guardian Devil by Kevin Smith, Joe Quesada, Jimmy Palmiotti, and Richard Eisenhoff doing the colors here. Here we have this beautiful image by Joe Quesada and inked by Palmiotti of Matt Murdock with his Billy Club just throwing it at you. Uh, this was originally published in 1998. Daredevil, Guardian, Devil, Marvel logo, Smith, Quesada, Palmiotti, Isanov, and Kemp. And then the back here, the Devil of Hell's Kitchen, Daredevil. Uh, the retail price of this being $50.00. Now, if you're not familiar with gallery editions, I have done overviews on the channel talking about the sizes of these books. But if you're not familiar with the type of books these are and how big they are, they are bigger than your omnibus editions. As a matter of fact, they're bigger than absolute editions. They don't really fit into the Kalax where I put the absolutes. To kind of give you an idea how much wider and taller they are than an omnibus. Of course not as thick right because these collect a lot of things and these just collect mainly a few issues of a big story arc the story has been previously collected before in a series of trade paperbacks it's been in a marvel select hardcover there has been a hardcover there has been an oversized hardcover deluxe edition and it's also collected in the marvel knights by joe quesada omnibus in case you're wondering where this fits in and this fits in right before the bendis omnis and uh, right after the renumbering of Daredevil. So it was when Marvel decided they relaunched the line as a Marvel Knights book, kind of like what they did with the Punisher and other characters. Like, there was an actual Marvel Knights uh, book. All right, so we're going to crack this open. I am going to have a non-spoilery section. Okay, let's go ahead and get this book open. There's some black end sheets right there. Daredevil, Guardian Devil, Daredevil, written by Kevin Smith, and penciler Joe Quesada, Jimmy Palmiotti. Here's the Devil, the Daredevil half artist, which I'll show a little bit of, but that's it, it's another one of the parts of the story that spoils things. And over here on the left-hand side, you have some of the colorists like Dan Kemp and Richard Eisenhoff, and then some of the letters over here like Liz Agarafiotis. And this particular book is printed at the iMac printer. We'll look at the binding and the build of it here in a little bit. Here's a wonderful introduction. This is also in the introduction of the uh, premiere hardcover of Guardian Devil. Talking about how just wonderful it was to have Kevin Smith come into comics and taking a gamble writing comics because he was already making movies in Hollywood. Uh, this is what kicks it off with issue number one. So again, this is after Daredevil was relaunched. This is the 1998 relaunch of Daredevil, and it collects Daredevil 1 through 8 and the half issue. And the half is all the way in the back, even though I think... Uh, I wasn't getting comics at the time, but I think it's supposed to be read before the final issue, but I'm glad they kept it all the way in the back. And in the spoiler part of this review, I'll explain why I'm glad. So let me give you the pitch, and then we'll look at the artwork. Uh, because whenever I do these gallery editions i figure most people have already read the stories but i know some of you haven't and this might be your first time reading it uh, so i do try to do a spoiler free part just kind of giving you the pitch so at the very beginning we see a letter written by karen page now karen is a little bit different than she is in the comics yes she's a love interest to matt but she doesn't really work at the legal firm uh, she actually has left Matt in the past. She was a big part of Born Again. As a matter of fact, this really does feel like almost like a follow-up. And a lot of people say that to Born Again, but it stands on its own. So here is a letter from Karen Page, pretty much just telling Matt, 
Matt, you're always there. You're you're always going to be the love of my life, but I can't stay. I have to go. This life is not for me. And I know you're a man of God, and you pray, and you always say, you know, if I don't pray, if I don't start believing in God, I'm going to go to hell. And that's just not me. But I love the way that she ends it with, you know, I'll be praying for us both. Love, Karen. So she's breaking up with Matt. He, she leaves him a letter. So when he wakes up, she's gone. Uh, then we meet this young lady right here. This is Gwyneth. She's a teen and she's holding a baby and she's running away from some men. Matt is going to confession because he's Catholic and he plays strong on his Catholic roots. Anytime somebody relaunches or writes the character, which is one of the things that I do love about him. Uh, but he's having some conflict with God and believing right now because of everything that's happened and Karen leaving him and he hears a heartbeat, a heartbeat of a young woman that is no older than 16. And judging from that heartbeat, a baby two months old or so. So he goes in and takes a leap of faith. Oh, I love this. The whole mucha framing. Oh, it's so beautifully done. So he jumps and goes to the rescue of this young lady. Now, he doesn't find her right away. She goes missing. So he starts contemplating on what to do next. Um, then we see Foggy Nelson with his lady. This is, oh no, this is not his lady. I'm sorry. This is a young lady named Lydia McKenzie. That he's kind of crushing on and he's kind of opening up to Matt that he's like, look, I know I'm with Lizzie, uh, but, you know, there's just something about this girl. And Matt's like, don't do this, you know. All right. So then we see some shadow uh, people right here that are pulling the strings as to why they were chasing this girl. And they're getting rid of the goons that were after these girls because nothing must come back to them. Uh, we see this young lady, Gwyneth, like I was talking about earlier with the baby. This time she is talking to God, asking for answers. And this is when it gets really interesting. Um, this is when she approaches Matt Murdock, not Daredevil. And she says, God told her to leave the baby with him. Because this baby is the second coming. This baby is going to be very important. And of course, Matt can sense heartbeats. Because he has enhanced senses. Because he's blind, but all his other senses have been enhanced. And she's not lying. She tells him that this baby was born of a virgin birth. And Matt doesn't know what to do with this. It's, it's almost like, how can this be? The, 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 she's not lying. She obviously gave birth to this baby. And she is a young virgin. So what do I do with this information? So Matt starts questioning what to do. She ends up leaving the baby with Matt. And he doesn't know what to do with a baby. You know, she just ends up leaving him. And there's a lot of imagery that I'll go back to a little bit. Because uh, it, it does kind of spoil what's really happening. Uh, so what he does is he ends up calling an old flame. And this, of course, is Black Widow. They've had a past. They even shared a comic for a while. He doesn't know what to do with a baby. She thinks it's kind of a booty call that she's like, oh, you called me because Karen left you. And he's like, no, 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 no. I called you because somebody left a baby and I need you to take care of the baby. I need to go and find out what really is going on. Later on, he's approached by this man right here. This is Nicholas uh, McCabe's. And Nicholas McCabe's is telling him about this organization that he works with that is after the baby. They need the baby back. And Matt doesn't know exactly who this guy is. He thinks he's from social services. And he's like, no, no, I work for a higher organization. You're going to see a lot of biblical things happening. The end of t days is coming. So we have to have that baby. The baby is actually the Antichrist. And Matt doesn't know what to do with this information. So again, it's questioning his beliefs. He's like, but he is a man of God and he doesn't know what to do. And this is, of course, a series of flashbacks. The other thing I didn't state um, is that this young lady, Gwyneth, the way she also leaves the baby is that she knows Matt Murdock is Daredevil. She says, God told me that you're Daredevil and the baby has to stay with you. You have to be his guardian devil. So Nicholas leaves Matt with a cross and Matt just doesn't know what to do with this information. He's attacked out on the streets because he keeps thinking about the baby. He questions Black Widow and what to do and, and what he does with the baby. is just kind of messed up to kind of test the his theories. Uh, this is where he gets kind of crazy because Foggy is with this, he's cheating on Liz with this girl named Lydia that he met and she turns into a demon. 
jumps out the window and kills herself. So he is arrested for murder. And of course, the big thing here, and this is the last part I'll talk about, and then I'll go into the spoilers part, because this is all part of the pitch right here, is the return of Karen Page, who comes back to Matt, holding him, and she says, Matt, I'm so sorry, I have AIDS. And she stays. Now, this the story continues. There's all kinds of twists and turns. It is about losing your faith and it is about just standing up and moving forward each day. It is a wonderful story if you haven't read it. And where it goes, it's not where I expected it to go. But I've read this a few times. We've actually done an old reader, new reader on it. And to kind of give you an idea of what the half issue looks like without going into spoilers. I'll be showing more of this in the spoilers part. This is what they look like. You have a full splash page and then you have some text over here explaining what the splash page is. For anybody that has read this, or for anybody that doesn't care about it, the spoilers, I'm going to go into major spoilers. I'm going to talk about the rest of this and why it's such a phenomenal story to me. And then I'll look at the extra so everybody can jump back in in case they haven't read it. But that's the pitch. Karen's back in Matt's life. They have this baby. Is the baby really the second coming of God? Or is the baby the Antichrist? And Matt's kind of caught in the middle and doesn't know what to do. Uh, yeah, Foggy's arrested because... He is being framed for murder because Foggy's a good guy. There's no way he killed this young lady. So as it turns out, this particular character of Nicholas McKebby keeps coming back into Matt's life. He starts questioning Karen and who she is. And maybe this is God's way of punishing her. It's why she has AIDS. He's a, not a good human being. We meet this guy named Ball, but Matt at this point realizes that you know he's not all his senses are working the way that they are supposed to be. And Ball was like, look, I work for a higher power. We have been waiting for this baby, and I need that baby. Again, kind of putting Matt in the middle of everything. And he doesn't know what to do. He actually questions Black Widow. Like, he starts losing his mind. And much like Born Again, it is like the villain is pulling the strings and attacking Matt from all angles. Not attacking Daredevil, but attacking Matt Murdock and the life around him. And... At, at this point, he doesn't know who to trust, so he takes the baby away from Black Widow and kind of gets into a fight and turns into the only person that he could turn to, and that is his mom, Maggie. So he sees her and leaves the baby with her and also leaves Karen until he figures out what to do with this baby. And then we get more and more of Nicholas playing a bigger role in this and hiring Bullseye to go and get the baby. And this is when things get bad. And we have him asking Doctor Strange for help. Because, of course, Doctor Strange would know if this baby is really the coming of the Antichrist. Is he coming from hell? What what's exactly is going on? I love the framing in here, too. Beautifully done. And what Doctor Strange senses is that Matt is not playing with all his cards. Because that cross that Nicholas gave him actually is causing him to have hallucinations. So now Matt figures something's going on but by the time he figures he's like okay so this isn't real something's going on he goes back to the church where you see this badass fight with bullseye who is using a gun at one point who doesn't really rely on weapons like that uh shoots mad in the left arm and kind of takes him out you know and and it's up to karen to save the baby and she tricks bullseye into letting matt go if she gives him the baby but what she does is she gives him a doll and man this is where it goes bad because he throws the billy club, Daredevil's billy club, at Daredevil. And Karen steps in the way and stops it and gets killed in the process. And there's this beautiful image right here. I wish I could have shown for people that they didn't want sports because that's just such a gorgeous image. As a matter of fact, you know, I think some of the covers to the trade paperback collections have spoiled that particular part. So now Matt is at a complete loss. Like, again, much like Born Again, he is completely destroyed. But it's about standing up and keep keep moving forward. So he goes and sees Mr. McKebby's right here. This is um, Nicholas McKebby's. He sees Ball and realizes that Ball is not really human. Like, some there's body parts that don't belong there. Now he's working with all his senses. He notices that there's some machinery going on. There's these fake freaking ninja that are pretending to be the hand. And finally, we get the revelation of who is behind everything, and it is Mysterio. 
That's right, Spider-Man's villain. Because, hey, why the hell not? If Daredevil can borrow Kingpin, he can also borrow Mysterio. But we get to find out exactly why Mysterio is behind everything. And how he just manipulated everything here. He was tired of being beat. And he found out that he has cancer. Terminal cancer. And he has a year to live. Or he was given a year to live. And it's basically because of all the chemicals that he'd been using over the years. The mask that he wore gave him cancer. And now it's been a year. He's been learning everything he could possibly learn because he's tired of being a joke. But instead of taking out Spider-Man, he decided to take out another arch nemesis. And that is Daredevil. He learned everything he needed to learn through the Kingpin. He paid him money. And he was like, I wanted to take you out. And through this backstory here, he is just telling Matt everything. He's like, this is how I got Gwyneth tricked into... Like, he gave her... She was artificially inseminated. Like, that is so messed up. And made her believe through drugs that she was actually giving birth to the second coming. He pulled everybody's strings. He gave Foggy some drugs. Uh, he hired a prostitute to pretend to be this woman to sleep with Foggy. And that's why she turned into a demon. And it was Matt's life falling apart. But the worst freaking thing that he did was fake the test results on Karen Page's AIDS test. She thought until her dying breath that she had AIDS. And she thought that there was a chance that she could have given Daredevil, Matt Murdock, AIDS too. And Matt is just sick to his stomach with this revelation. Because his endgame is Quentin Beck wants to go out getting killed by a superhero. Not Spider-Man, but this time around he went with Daredevil. Because he wants Daredevil to just put a bullet in his head. As a matter of fact, he has a gun. And Daredevil doesn't. He walks away. It's like, I'm not going to give you that satisfaction. You think you can break me? You're a joke and a fraud. I love that. That even all the hell that Matt Murdock just went through, learning that this piece of garbage was manipulating everything and was the cause of the death of Karen and all these horrible things happening. He lets him live. He just wants the baby and wants to get out of there. And he even tells Quentin that there's nothing original about him. That everything he stole from other villains this master plan that he had. He's already done that with Born Again, right? The Kingpin did the exact same thing that tore him down. There's actual lines that they use that are very similar to Born Again. And Quentin yeah, Mysterio figures it out that he is nothing but a copy. And he realizes that there's only one way to end this. And I, this part is morbid and messed up And when he commits suicide, but he says, I stole this one too from Craven and shoots himself dead. And that's the end, pretty much, wrapping it up. Then we get to the eighth and final issue where Clark Kent is delivering the news about the death of a masked man. Uh, Peter and MJ go to the funeral of Karen Page, along with some other familiar faces. There's a lot of Easter eggs in the background from some independent creators. I believe that is Jack and Stan there, even though it kind of looks like Ben Urich. It, I, I love this part, because instead of like reading what he wrote down, to read at her funeral he just says there are no words i'll miss you and that i'm not gonna spoil what she wrote but it is one of the most beautiful letters oh my gosh so it's about rebuilding it's about finding yourself again after all of these disasters and just keeping moving forward and of course he gives up the baby to orphanage and maggie asks i think it was maggie oh it was this lady uh you know she asked you know what should we name the baby and just says Karen and I love that he goes to confession again because at the end of the day he's just a Catholic boy I'm gonna go do my father's work Padre do my father's work now this is the half issue and this is why I didn't want to show it uh, I'll show it uh, through the extras but this tells you the meeting that he Kingpin had with Mysterio showing you know everything that the Kingpin knows about Matt Murdock and there's some classic artwork in here from uh, Ramita Sr., Jay Lee, artists that have worked on the character in the over the years. All right, let's welcome everybody back. Now, for people that don't want any kind of spoilers, here we go. 
This is the back matter. So you have an a uh, afterword by Kevin Smith from the 2000 Visionaries. Uh, you have the introduction by Ben Affleck from the 2000 Visionaries because he was playing said character in the movie. Uh, this is an actual introduction from Tom Sullivan. And then you have covers here. These are the variant covers. I think some of these are from Trade Paper Bags and Wizard Magazine. And then you have some character designs by Joe Quesada. Pencils by Joe Quesada. Beautiful pencils by Joe Quesada right there before the inks and colors. Original page art. And yeah. You see where... Actually, Joe doesn't really use any X's, huh? Just kind of tells you that there's going to be black right there. Uh, the book has 232 pages and retails for 45 no actually just $50 I thought it was $49.99 now as far as the build of the book it does have sewn binding and that's what the eye looks like it is printed in this thick glossy paper stock and I'm sure you all notice the frame that is going around and most people, whenever they see that, they ask me, why didn't they just expand it? If you expand it with the dimensions that they use here, that would either warp the images or you would lose some of the art. And so to kind of give you an idea, I'm going to compare it to the Marvel Knights Omnibus. So, for example, this page goes full bleed down here at the bottom. And you can see more of the art, whereas the Omnibus is cut off. So that's what you're going to be gaining if it's like full bleed. Not that like lines like that matter to people, uh, but you do get more of that. And like I said, if they had gone with the full page, like it would have, you would have lost some artwork. Uh, let me find another example. So here's another example where it goes fully down to the page and like the doors here, you get the entirety of the doors plus the wood back there. And I know this is silly. But I do want to be as thorough as possible because it does matter to some people. And here, like the baby's hand, you can't see the baby's hand. You can't even see the chin of the baby in the picture here in the omnibus. And again, you get more of the office at the end of issue number one here and more of this picture right here at the bottom. It doesn't say end of issue one. Uh, it just goes and starts the next issue. The covers are done completely full textless, kind of like they did here. But here they have a frame around them. Uh, whereas here, they don't have a frame. Let me find just one more page. So I just wanted to use this spread page as an example right here, where you get more of his chest logo right there. Over here, this is where it cuts off on the omnibus. So this is to kind of give you an idea of just what you're getting. You're not just getting bigger artwork. You're also getting more of the picture in there. Uh, for the people that are wondering, you know, what are these gallery editions like? And like I mentioned, if they had stretched it out all the way here, we would have lost some of the art. And the point of this, think of it like those widescreen bars on movies. Like, I don't know why I go with Dragon Ball Z, but like the Dragon Ball Z widescreen bars kind of make you think you're getting more of the picture, but they, the DVDs in America. Uh, but I did want to showcase the art. Okay, let's just do one more. We get more of the fingernail there so if fingernails are important to you get the gallery edition it's more of the artwork the book is 50 dollars and 232 pages and that as they say is that if you're interested in purchasing this particular gallery edition don't forget to check out our sponsors if you're in europe and you're interested in buying these books definitely check out walt's comic shop in berlin germany they have the cheapest pre-order prices flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all eu countries Emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Waltz Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! Cheapgraphicnovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, 
reply back to that email and let them know near mint condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this hardcover. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan on picking it up, if you already have read Guardian Devil, what you think of the story. Uh, if you've never read it and you're going into it completely blind, I hope you didn't watch the spoiler part of the video. But uh, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to smash the like button. And I always like to ask this question. What's a gallery edition Daredevil story that you would love to see collected? Wait, no. What's a Daredevil story that you'd love to see collected in gallery edition? Woo, there we go. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.